Hey guys, uh, good to talk to you again. My, uh, we're getting ready to talk about unit fractions today, and let's go ahead and look at our objective. And our objective is 3.3c, and that's explained that a unit fraction is one over b, represented by the quantity formed by one part of a whole that has been partitioned into equal parts, where b is a non-zero whole number. And it seems a little bit confusing, but in layman terms is, uh, uh, what we want to be able to do by the end of the lesson is I can write a fraction to name the part of a whole. And uh, we're going to look over here really quick. Uh, what, are you, what is a unit fraction? And uh, we're missing part of that, aren't we? So th these are examples of unit fractions right here. Uh, you have um, one half, one fourth, one seventh and uh, 1 16th. Those are all, all examples of uh, unit fractions. And basically what a unit fraction is, is a fraction where the top number, the numerator, the one above the fraction bar is a one. So if the, if the uh, numerator on a fraction is one, it's a unit fraction. And uh, I'll scoot this up so we can read what the definition says here. It says a unit fraction has a fraction where the numerator top number is one and the denominator bottom number is a whole number. So that's what a unit fraction is. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, I've got a video right here that I made kind of talking about unit fractions uh, where we used uh, some of these pattern blocks to uh, give examples of what unit fractions are. So let's get ready and watch this video. Okay, um, here we got, uh, we're using pattern blocks and we're using some uh, hexagons to uh, represent uh, unit fractions. Unit fractions are what we're talking about today. So uh, you can see that uh, uh, I've got two trapezoids, uh, forms a hexagon, uh, three rhombuses can represent a hexagon, and then I have six triangles to represent a, a hexagon. So if I take uh, one of these trapezoids, okay, one of these trapezoids would represent one half of the hexagon, and that's a unit fraction because the numerator is one, okay? On the rhombuses right here, one of these would represent one third, one third of the hexagon, and it has a numerator of one, so that represents a unit fraction. And on the uh, triangles over here, it takes six triangles to make a hexagon. So one of them would represent one sixth of the hexagon. So uh, just remember, uh, unit fractions always have a numerator of one, and uh, we can break them up. Uh, the, uh, the amount of equal groups uh, that it takes to make the whole represents the denominator. So it takes two trapezoids to make a hexagon, so that's one half. It takes three of the rhombuses, so that's one third, and six of the triangles, which represents one sixth. Okay, uh, we're gonna talk about this uh, guided practice problem. It says, look at these figures. A fraction of each set is circled. In which set does the circle part represent a unit fraction? So, um, the important part of this is we need to figure out uh, which one of these is a unit fraction. So I'm going to circle that. So we're trying to figure out which one is a unit fraction. So whenever we have um, a set of stuff that represents a fraction, we need to go ahead and interpret uh, what, what fraction that is. So um, remember, when we're talking about fractions, uh, the numerator, the top number, is always the part that we're asking about. So and this is going to be the ones that are circled. And the denominator is going to be the total amount of parts. So I always put ask over total. And that helps you uh, build fractions, basically. So with that information, look at answer choice A. What fraction does uh, answer choice A represent? Okay, we'll check that and see. So the, uh, the total amount of pieces there, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total pieces. So that means my denominator, the number on the bottom is going to be eight. 
and I can see out of the ones that are circled, seven of them are circled. So the fra that uh, set of triangles represents seven eighths. Okay, answer choice B. What uh, does that set of uh, triangles represent? What fraction does that set of triangles represent? Okay, well, let's check it and see. So I, I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six total. So that means my denominator is going to be six. And of those six, one, two, three of them are circled. So that would represent three sixths. Okay, answer choice C. What fraction does that set of triangles represent? Okay, we'll check that and see if that's right. I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that means my denominator is going to be eight. And my numerator uh, is the ones that are circled, which is one. So that's going to represent one eighth. And my last answer choice, D. What uh, fractional set of those is circled? Okay, yeah, that looks like there's one, two, three, four total. So that means my denominator is going to be four. And my numerator, I can see there's three of them are circled, so that's going to be three fourths. So out of my answer choices, A, B, C, or D, which one represents a unit fraction? Yes, that's correct. C represents a unit fraction because it's the only one that has a numerator that is 1. Okay, let's look at our next problem. Uh, Kanji has a bag containing two red jelly beans, one yellow jelly bean, three green jelly beans, and two orange jelly beans. Which color of jelly bean can be represented as a unit fraction of the bag of jelly beans? So I'm going to circle the important information. I see there are two reds, one yellow, three green, and two orange. So uh, underlying the question says, which color of jelly bean can be represented as a unit fraction of the bag of jelly beans? So unit fraction, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the one that is a unit fraction. So uh, on my answer choices there, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tell what fraction each one of the uh, jelly beans represents of the bag of jelly beans. Uh, the first thing to do uh, is all of these are going to have the same denominator. So what denominator are all four of these colors going to have? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we need to figure out what the total is to answer that. So I will go ahead and look. I have two red one yellow, one yellow, three green, and two orange. So to figure out what the denominator is going to be, I need to figure out what the total is of that. So I know one and two is three, plus three would be six, plus two more would be eight. So there's a total of eight jelly beans. We have eight JB jelly beans. So the denominator for all of my Answer choices is going to be 8. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down there. So the denominator for the orange, for the green, for the red, and the yellow are all going to be 8. What is the numerator for uh, answer choice F? Yes, the numerator is going to be 2 because there's 2 red. So 2 eighths of the jelly beans are red. What's the numerator for the yellow? Yes, that's correct. It says there is one yellow, so my numerator would be one. One of the eight jelly beans is yellow. What is the numerator for the answer choice H? Yes, that's correct. It's three because there's three green. So there's three-eighths of the jelly beans are green. And what's the numerator for answer choice J? Yes, the numerator is going to be two because two are orange and two-eighths of the jelly beans are orange. So, uh, out of these, red, yellow, green, or orange, which one represents a unit fraction? Yes, that's correct. Yellow is going to represent a unit fraction.
Okay, let's look at our next problem. It says, these circles have been divided into equal parts. Look at the unit fractions labeled on the circle. And uh, the question is, which shows the, <clears throat> the unit fraction in order from largest part to smallest part? So I'm going to underline that's real important. That's what I need to be able to answer. And I'm going to circle this part. Largest part to smallest part. So uh, a lot of times when we're uh, comparing stuff or ordering stuff, um, sometimes they'll ask us to do it from least to greatest or from greatest to least. On this one, we're trying to find the largest part uh, all the way down to the smallest part. Something else I want to point out to you, whenever we're uh, comparing fractions, uh, when we have models uh, that we're using to compare the fractions, you need to make sure that those, uh, those shapes are congruent. Okay, and what, what, what I mean by congruent means they're the same size and same shape. So when we're comparing fractions, it's important that the models are the same size and same shape. Because sometimes they will try to throw something in there where they might have a bigger, a larger circle comparing to a smaller circle. And uh, you can't, it's really hard, difficult to compare uh, if they're not the same size and same shape. So make sure the, uh, the shapes or the models are congruent, same size, same shape. So we're going to look at this really quick. Uh, our uh, fractions that we have are one-sixth, one-third, and one-fourth. Okay, um, even without a model uh, with, a fra with the fractions, um, we're going to be asked to compare fractions that have the same numerator. And all, all three of these are unit fractions. They all have a one as a numerator. So we're going to be asked to do that. Sometimes they may all have two as a numerator or might have three as a numerator. Okay, but uh, we're going to be asked in the third grade to compare fractions that have the same numerator. How can I tell uh, which fraction has the larger pieces just based off of the fraction itself? That is correct. We're looking for the one with the smallest denominator. The one with the smallest denominator means the pieces are larger. So um, out of these uh, three fractions, one-sixth, one-third, and one-fourth, which is the largest fraction? That is correct. One-third is the largest, and we can see right there that it has the largest section uh, on that circle right there. It's broken into three pieces. So the pieces are bigger, so that is my largest fraction. So I'm going to be looking for um, a, a list of the fractions where one-third is the first one. That's the reason I put a one above it. Okay, now when I compare one-fourth and one-sixth, which is the next largest? One-fourth or one-sixth? That is correct. One-fourth is the next largest fraction because you can see the pieces are larger. It's one-quarter, and this is one-sixth. I can see that piece is larger, and my denominator is smaller. So that means that's my next one in order from largest to smallest. And that automatically tells us that one sixth is going to be the smallest one. So they should be listed in order from one third, one fourth, and one sixth. So uh, I can go ahead and look at my answer choices really quick and eliminate all the answer choices that doesn't have one third as my largest fraction. So I can eliminate answer choice A because it starts with one sixth. Uh, that actually looks like it's ordered from least to greatest. Okay, and I can eliminate this answer choice, D, because it starts off with 1, 6 also. So now I'm only looking at C and B. So I'm looking for the, now I'm looking for the one that has 1 fourth listed as the second largest. Okay, answer choice C, that does have 1 fourth. And answer choice B has 1 sixth. So answer choice B is not ordered from largest to smallest. The correct answer is answer choice C. Okay, it's time again to complete your independent practice. Uh, complete, please complete the Schoology assignment uh, after this video. And uh, I went ahead and put a PDF in there also. So you can go ahead and print it out and uh, work it out on pencil and paper if you'd like prior to uh, inputting your answers into Schoology. Just make sure you do input your answers into Schoology because that's how we see your work. And uh, if you have any questions though, you don't understand something or something doesn't seem like it's working like it's supposed to, please email your teacher or send them a message on Schoology and uh, make sure you take your time on this assignment and do your very best and best of luck to you. We'll talk to you later.